no, you're joking, it's cosplay. <laughs> uh, I, of course, am a water defying space to <clears throat> toy <-darian. laughs> Come here to a Comic Con, New York Comic Con 2018 to present the George Lucas show. Uh, so, how many people here have ever been to a taping of the George Lucas show before? Great, roughly 4%. Okay. <laughs> We all know George Lucas, uh, who not only is the most successful filmmaker in history, but the most successful comedian in history. Uh, he, of course, created the most profitable joke in history. I have a bad feeling about this. And so after he was uh, forced into retirement, when Disney stole Star Wars from him, <laughs> midnight theft, took it right out from under his nose, with the indignity of only paying him six billion dollars. <laughs> George decided to uh, spread his wings if you catch my drift. And uh, I have wings. And uh, try implying his unparalleled success and artistic, uh, I don't know, adeptness to other fields. Uh, so we've been doing the George Lucas talk show for about a couple of years now, right? About a couple of years. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, started with uh, Jar Jar Binks as a sidekick, and then Jar Jar got staffed on uh, TBS as Wrecked. <laughs> part of the room on that. So, uh, you know, I'm old buddies with George, obviously you might know my work as an actor, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones. Uh, two big entries from the Phantom Menace trilogy. Uh, but uh, I also, yeah, I started out the uh, sort of a corporate side of Lucasfilm, a production accountant, and then moved my way up to the so, And then since then, I've mostly stayed uh, behind the scenes. Uh, let's see, uh, let's, uh, let's do a little crowd work, right? That's what you do in a big life. Uh, uh, you there. Uh, what's, what's your name? Mm, how do you know when you're finished? Uh, uh, you there with the swords? Yes, all their nunchucks. Hold on one second. <laughs> Nightwing, I'm so sorry, so sorry. Not used to playing to this deeper room. Uh, how, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Great. <laughs> Crowd work, right? Let's start the show. I don't know, 80 seat comedy theaters? <laughs> I'm in my early 70s, it's reasonable. It's true, it's true. I would have thought the whole high five thing, but we all know why those are covering from a herniated disc. <laughs> I'm not used to this bigger room. It's a lot to ask of a, of a, of a 70 some year old man. Uh, 
I, I want to thank you all for coming out here. I, I do want to take the temperature of the room uh, because I'm, I'm genuinely not sure what people think of me anymore. <laughs> I know there was a time when people were very angry with me. And Pariah! <laughs> he ruined Star Wars, they said! That's what I said, and now, but now everyone's mad and they're saying they want, some people, some people, uh, mostly incels, are saying <laughs> that they want me, they want me back, they want me to make, they want me to make another Star Wars movie. Ryan Johnson, more like Lion Johnson. No, now I won't have a bad word said against Ryan. J.J. Abrams, more like not even okay, Abrams. <laughs> You know, it, it, before you criticize The Last Jedi, I, I, I encourage you all to take a good look at The Brothers Bloom, available on DVD. It's a fine film, a fine caper. Now, you know, he also made that. Is this just genuinely you plugging Brothers Bloom? Yeah, matter of fact, if you want to dream about The Blood Brothers Bloom, let's get it trending for Comic Con. Take out your phone, hashtag, give me the brothers. Uh, now, of course, I wanted to make, uh, I wanted to make a Star Wars movie about, uh, microbiotics. The sounds of Star Wars. I wanted to make a movie about things so small you can't see them. Everyone want to see that? I want, I want to ask, this might be controversial, who's mad about The Last Jedi? It's okay if you are. Who's mad about it? Oh. Stand up, show yourself. <laughs> All right. Leia herself! <laughs> All right. Do you want me, let me ask you this. Do you want me to, uh, do you want me to make a Star Wars movie? No. <laughs> this guy's not happy with anybody. Okay, okay, smart guy. Who do you want to make Star Wars? You're so smart. Uh, how about, uh, Quentin Tarantino? Yeah! <laughs> Oh great, yeah, he's gonna put the N-word in it. That's what this guy wants. See, that's what this guy wants. This guy thought the racial politics of fantasy. No thanks, no thanks. No thanks. That's a, that's a bad idea. He's a fine filmmaker, but you don't want that in the, We already have enough issues in the Star Wars world. We don't need that. Okay? Did anyone here want me to make a Star Wars movie? Any, anybody wants me to make one? Say it now. Nobody? Nobody? Not you? All right, let me ask you a question. Do you see Red Tails? Because if you didn't, I'm not interested. You gotta support all of my movies. This is good. You see Red Tails? Do you know what it is? Open oh, weekend, thank you. It's about the Tuskegee Airmen. All right, they were, they were heroes. That's a good movie. If you saw a strange magic opening weekend, stand up now, we tried. I bet most people here, and this is a nerd convention, don't even know what strange magic is. I asked again, because the only explanation is that they didn't hear me. <laughs> if you saw strange magic. Who saw strange magic? Did anyone here see strange magic? Literally no. Yeah, some people over here. <laughs> On purpose? Strange Magic was the movie when I when when Disney tricked me into selling them Star Wars. I tricked them. I said you have to also release this CGI animated jukebox musical about fairies who live in the woods. And then they tricked me by releasing it. They, they released it on Touchstone Pictures, which isn't even a thing anymore. You can't find that movie on Blu-ray. You can only find it on DVD and digital. It, it, it broke box office. It broke box office records. If you don't know about it. All right, the same year that Star Wars, uh, The Force Awakens, set the box office record for the highest grossing movie of the year, Strange Magic set the box office record for the lowest grossing CGI animated musical to be released on 3,000 screens. Here, here's a fully genuine question. Raise your hand if you had not heard about Strange Magic until... <laughs> this is my final film. Shame on you. I just been out of pocket outside the studio system and truly independent I'm and, and then I made it and do any of you have daughters? Let me ask you, do any of you have daughters? Shame on you, sir. This I made this I said this. I said this. I said this. I said that I made Star Wars for boys and I made strange magic for girls. So shame on you. 
Shame on you for not Walk out of here, Google it, and you will find that George Lucas sent that. Now, let me, let me say this. We, I want you to tweet about the Brothers Bloom. I also want you to tweet some variation of the sentence. I learned about Strange Magic, George Lucas' final film, at Comic-Con 2018. All right. Well, I think we should bring out our guests because we've got a sterling panel of guests here. And we've, we've staged this terribly, ladies and gentlemen, because the stairs are here, but all of our guests are over there. So, so I'm going to ask you to be more enthusiastic than you actually are. And I want you to carry the length of their journey. And I don't know if there's any music, we didn't have a cue for this, but I don't know if there's any music that you can just play by default when the guests are walking over, but I'm very concerned about this transition. If not, then respectful silence from the music it is, uh, will, be, will be the choice of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring up our panel of guests. Sonia Manzano. We have a 35 millimeter trailer from the original release of Morning Glory, and everyone here is going to get a piece of it. You get it! 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 You get I know that a lot of things have been thrown out of canon. There are a lot of Star Wars legends, and, and we're all we're all getting used to the new the new universe. But I'm willing to say that I think Morning Glory uh, might be a late period addition in the Star Wars uh, canon. Legends? No, no, no. I think it might be because it's a bad robot production, yeah. and I think we're seeing a descendant of uh, of Ben Solo. Uh -huh. uh, let's be optimistic. He's going to become Ben probably in the next film. He's going to go back to being Ben Solo. Probably have some kids. And then thousands of years later, one of them will become a distinguished network anchor who has to work on a morning news program. I don't want to make an omelet. I, I should, thought you would know that was pretty funny. I should say uh, that the opening strip of this says programming with R, an appropriate PG-13 film. So uh, be careful. Uh, well, what's on your strip? Are we passing it around? Let's go ahead and pass those uh, film strips around while we talk. Now, Hello panel, welcome, welcome to the George Lucas Talk Show. Thank you so much for coming here. Uh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk to you all throughout this, but also feel free to chime in at any point. If you, how does it feel to be up on the panel? Does everyone feel comfortable and good? It's terrific, I love it. I agree. Yeah. Right. I'm just very jealous of Sonya's coat. <laughs> it's a very shiny coat. It's okay, I wear this when I don't care what I look like. <laughs> Last night, and I thought I'd keep the pop 
You almost look like a droid in that. That looks like uh, one of those silver droids I don't remember the name of. <laughs> Well, thank you. Well, you've certainly inspired generations of people from your work on Sesame Street. Yeah! Uh, Mr. Lucas, I have a question for you. I, I was Great. wondering if uh, when uh, uh, Frank Oz auditioned, did you audition as Grover when he auditioned for Yoda? Yeah, Yoda's just Grover. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that. He's just like, what if Grover was a little more mature? <laughs> like when he's being, when, when he's playing pranks in that first scene, that's like a teenage Grover. That's what Grover will be like if he oh, ever, if he I ever progressed. Yes, and then old, characters. old Grover when he gets sick. I mean, we don't like to think about these characters existing on a timeline, but they're mortal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, so is Grover a descendant of Yoda? Yes, that's how it works. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. At some point, at some point, Yoda hooked up with somebody blue <laughs> and, and very fuzzy, and so eventually became moderately fuzzy. But like, you have to imagine whoever it was with Yoda was like extra, just like a like a hair dryer on a cat, kind of like that fuzzy. But that's how it works. Well, you did a great job, and we love seeing him on in your movie, sir. Oh well, thank you so much. And and you now, Travis, you're on a you're on a show that's called My Brother, My Brother and Me. Right. I have to confess that the working title for the first Star Wars movie, I mean, it had a number of working titles, but the, the working title for it was My Father, My Sister, and Me. Um, <laughs> that, that was actually our inspiration. Yeah, and then we decided to spoiler it, you know, that's spoiler I mean, our whole show is just like a Star Wars fan cast, basically. Like, there's, we, I, you all listen, right? You just talk about Star Wars. <laughs> we do actually talk about Star Wars a lot. That started as a joke, but as I said it, I was like, no way, we do. <laughs> Yeah, we do talk about Star Wars. What's your, hottest, what's your hottest take about Star Wars? And don't hold that. My hottest take? Your hottest take on Star Wars. What's the, what's the opinion you hold about Star Wars that you think that's dangerous? Like this guy with his blue I, I don't have <laughs> any hot takes at all about anything, let alone Star Wars. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> now, Will. Yeah? You ever write a song about Star Wars? Many. Really? Like a hundred? A hundred songs about Star Wars? Or more than a hundred? You know, when you say, at first I was thinking I should be pleased, but if I was still in charge, I'd be calling my lawyer right now. A <laughs> hundred's too many, you're violating the trademark. Um, we're only on Blu-ray. Only on Blu-ray. Well, actually, one of the prizes I think we're going to get away right now, I don't know if anyone has a pen, uh, but I got Will's uh, solo album, Friday Night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this could be more appropriate. It's actually Friday night right now. You got a pen? You like this? You have a record player? Yeah. Okay, that's how this works. <laughs> always bring a pen with you, and always like everything. <laughs> All right. You want it signed? Do you want it signed by just Will or by everybody on the panel? Everybody would be great. Great. All right. All right. Now, Will. Now, did you see Star Wars as a kid? Was it a thing you liked? I was I I was born after the first two before the last one. Wait, so you were wait, okay. I was born, born after Star Wars. Wars. I was what? I was born. <laughs> I was alive for Return of the Jedi. Okay, that's the sixth movie, Will. You're gonna... Oh. <laughs> Are you a looper? You couldn't possibly. Uh, this, is, this is if you were born after the first two, but before the. I don't. Honest, I thought you did Goonies, and that's why I'm here. But then I. My buddy Steve. My buddy Steve produced Goonies. My buddy Steve. I was standing over there, I was googling it, so I was like, maybe we can see Goonies are good enough. And I was like, oh, god. Okay, I, I mean, we can still do it. My buddy Steve produced Goonies, and I wouldn't mind if you all sing Goonies are good enough at the end. I did. I did think of a hot Teddy. I think he walks up great. I love <laughs> I know that a lot of people have beef with Ewoks. They think they're dumb. I think they're great. I don't think they think that anymore. I think people moved on. Yeah. <laughs> have we all grown to accept Ewoks? Yeah. You know, I think mean, we've all really grown as people. <laughs> uh, now, Greg, you're you're a, a very very successful voice actor. You do Woo! so many shows. Woo! And you do a lot of Star Wars voices. I do, but I don't know anything about the movies. I feel embarrassed. It's okay. It's 
Okay, but there. Right, your work is so important. I know, but I just I, I should know more. I just found out I was a Mandalorian a little while ago. I didn't even know that. I've been now, do you know what that is? Do you know what Mandalorian no, not is? Not really. <laughs> I played the bounty hunter on that game, and somebody's like, "And you're Mandalorian." I was like, "Really? Wow! I've been doing it for ten years, and I just realized that." Wow. Well, the thing is, those characters don't know anything about Star Wars movies. <laughs> so it's very method. I'm just a very method actor. Yeah. Now, when you do a Star Wars voice, like when they tell you you're a bounty hunter, what kind of uh, what kind of voice do you? Well, she kind of talks a little bit like this. She's kind of like a female Clint Eastwood or something. She's Clint Eastwood. <laughs> um, that's great. That's really good. I have a terrible voice. <laughs> Um, but but how many different voices do you think you do? Oh gosh, probably like hundreds. I do little tiny girls like this and, and babies like, and I play little old ladies like this who don't know anything about Star Wars at all. <laughs> and I play Daphne and Scooby Doo Jeepers. I've been doing that for a really long time. <laughs> If, if I can offer up one correction, though, the old lady would probably know about Star Wars, but they'd have to go along with the joke out of the Well, all right, I'm going to throw a character at you, and I'm going to see if you can come up with a voice. Let's say, uh, let's say I had a character, and it's a rogue, he's a droid, but he's super dumb. And he's, and the line of dialogue he says is, I don't like how hot it is in here. <laughs> And he's wrong about it, it's, but the temperature's perfect. That's how done. <laughs> I don't like how hot it is in here. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, I eventually like to meet you until the end. That was really good. Very, very robotic-like. <laughs> now, Sonia, we're, I want to show a little clip of something because uh, you, you're, uh, you've done something uh, that very few people have done, which is that you, you've acted with Star Wars characters in a non-Star Wars property. I did? Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's show the, let's show the, the Star Wars character. Let's see. Uh, uh, welcome to Sesame Street. So that's where we are, Sesame Street. But why did you bring me here? Oh, you and your secret missions. You understood what he just said? Oh, yes, indeed. He just said he's on one of his types of secret missions. He has an important message to deliver to someone here on Sesame Street. Oh, I do beg your pardon. I am Supreme, you know. And this is my counterpart, Arthur D. Arthur, come back at once. Where are your manners? You can give your message later. Besides, after driving 50 parsecs in that capsule, we could both do with a little refreshment. Of course I'm right. You want some refreshments? Well, why don't you come into the store? I mean, I can give you some coffee or like a ham sandwich. But, I mean, well, what do you guys eat? I know what they like to eat. Probably canned food. Cans and all. All oh, I have is a good boy. I'll get to get to the Um, and for your friend here? A glass of grape fluid and a bottle. Oh, great. Um, you don't need the store, you need the fix it shop. Oh, uh, we'll get it. Oh, how interesting. Oh, that's a, that's a tree. Oh, really? Yep. I've never been on a planet like this before. Tell me, how many moons do you have? Uh, we have one. Only one? Well, I suppose it'll do. A tree. Here we are. Um, uh, where, where do you want it? Oh, uh, could we start with my shoulders? Oh, heavens, that's nice. Now the neck. A little lower, please. Oh, ecstasy. Now <laughs> the That was our Me Too moment. <laughs> and now the knees. Oh, that's good. And now the ankles. Oh, I feel like I'm a new droid. Oh, yes, yes, I'll do your turn next. Well, uh, okay. Where... How does he drink this? Oh, well, just pour it in. That's how it works. No, wait, that's the fun. That's right. Just pour it straight in a hole in the top. That must be good. Oh. Okay. I can't take you anywhere. What did he say? He said, uh, thanks, I needed that. <laughs> 
what the storyline was that R2D2 fell in love with the fire hydrant. <laughs> Uh, it was a marvelous day, and Darth Vader was on the show as well. Uh, at some, do you have that? As I well? don't have that clip. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who did Darth Vader fall in love with? Uh, no, no, he didn't fall in love with oh. anyone, but he was. Uh, uh, He's been hurt a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Mike died in childbirth. His friend threw him in a volcano. <laughs> Spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> I just want to watch Darth Vader and Big Bird in a yeah. Like, I don't understand you. I don't understand you either. What is this? <laughs> yeah, so that's I, what they sound like, right? I have to go and... <laughs> Now, why haven't you done more voice work? Those are great voices. <laughs> I only have the one, and it's also weird. <laughs> well, it's interesting that R2D2 fell in love with a fire hydrant because, uh, as notoriously, uh, fire hydrants are soaked in urine. Uh, for dogs, which seems to, that's a, that's a rare insight into the, you know, R2-D2 has very specific uh, interests. <laughs> and you wouldn't think of all places that you would have learned about that on Sesame Street. I felt like Dorothy and oiling up the Tin Man when I saw that image there. Do you remember filming that? Was it fun when you were filming Yes, that? it was fun, and I completely forgot about it until I saw it. <laughs> Show it to me, I would not have remembered it. Yeah, and it's that's canon. Like I don't care. You can throw out all the books. You can, like I'll fight for that one. Like you can throw out everything, all the video games, all the books. I don't care. But they did go to Earth, and C3PO was an absolute idiot about trees. Like, this guy knows every language. He's been to Endor. <laughs> I mean, whenever it was filmed, it has to be pre-Jedi, because if you go to Endor and you don't know what a tree is, you haven't been paying attention. You know? That's the whole planet is just trees. No, but Mr. Lucas, a lot of, a lot of your movies take place on deserts. Yeah, and, that, and, you, and you're exactly right to call that out, because most of the time, C-3PO has only known sand. And the idea that something could grow from sand that means he's never seen a, a, a mirage, you know? He's never gotten, because he doesn't experience thirst. He just has joint ache. Uh, where I draw to the to is perpetually thirsty, as we have discovered. <laughs> it is the one time I've ever seen him drink, so probably like for all the movies, he's like, I'm dying for a cup of water. So well, let, me, let me spill some tea here. This was the period where R2 was hitting the bottle through the arm. <laughs> And he kept on asking to have it written into the script, so that's why he was the bartender in Jabba's Palace. And then he goes on Sesame Street, and he's like, yeah, give me iced tea. I, it's, I find it weird to know that R2-D2 fell in love with the fire hydrants, because I've always considered R2-D2 and C-3PO together. Yeah! I always thought, this is my counterpart, and I'm like, oh, okay. They have, they have an arrangement. Uh, fire hydrants are okay. Yeah, like it's like, one celebrity list. And it's they, made a, they made a list, and on TV, it was like, fire hydrants. <laughs> and, and that's, I think Steve Rubio, who didn't even know that trees existed, had no idea that if they go to Earth, there's going to be fire hydrants everywhere. <laughs> so, like, he gave him, like, the hall pass of all time. And that, you know, I would make that movie if anyone from Disney is listening. <laughs> like, a movie about how like, Steve Rubio and RTV go on a romantic getaway, or he tricks him. They make a little list, and he's like, fire hydrant. I wonder who's C-3P, who would be on C-3PO's list? I haven't even considered that before. David Niven? <laughs> David Niven? Maybe. Seems like he's tight. That makes sense. That he's sense. looking for the fire hydrant that squirts, you know. <laughs> that's a myth. That's a myth. That, 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 that's not what, that doesn't happen. That's not what that is. Uh, now, uh, who, else, who else brought their own pen? Yes, you at the very end. How, would you be interested in, in Sonia's book, uh, Becoming Maria, signed by either just Sonia or by everyone on the panel? Everyone? Everyone, everyone in the room? Okay, I'm on board with that. <laughs> pass this around. Honestly, when they pass this around, everyone is going to sign this book. It's going to be a new book. Have a great summer. <laughs> this is going to be 
be a real collector's item. <laughs> I don't want to be on the antiques roadshow in 150 years. 400 people, including a future president. Uh, hopefully, uh, if the country survives. Uh, the, uh, if you watch the prequel trilogy, I mean, I told, I warned you. Um, the, the, this is, you know, everything that's happening was in that, that trilogy, but people were so busy talking about other things. This is how democracy dies, two thunderous applause. Yeah. <laughs> And people say he can't write. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, Will. Yeah? Your, your musical influences, because like I, you know, music's a very important part of, you know, I've changed the way music is used in movies. Like American Graffiti uh, was the, really the first movie to have, uh, uh, use a soundtrack to pop the music the way that I used it. Uh, have you benefited at all from, uh, like Arcade Fire has had songs in movies. Do you benefit from that? Uh, That's lucrative, right? That, that you do well. very lucrative. I, yeah. I, I, I once lost an Oscar with John Williams. We both lost an Oscar. Together. I lost an Oscar. Yeah. We're Oscar losers. Yeah. <laughs> I got an honorary one. Wait, do you mean you lost, like, you didn't win or you lost it? I, no, I didn't win and then they just gave me one, a general one. Which oh, I, don't... I won and I lost mine. You won and you lost it? You misplaced it? Oh, well, that's, that's a different story. That's very sad. Did they replace it? Will they give you a new one if you lost it? Just give me one of John Williams. Like, <laughs> did, you, did you meet John Williams? I did very briefly. What did you talk to him about? I talked to him about nothing. About nothing? I think he's met a lot of, he met a, met a lot of people in his life. Right. And, and you, you didn't contribute? What did you say? Good job? Was, I felt like it was like meeting the Pope or something. Where right. He kissed his hand and then he walked and wandered away. Yeah. He didn't ask you any questions? No. Mm. It's like your lips are so soft, and I was like, thank you, sir. <laughs> Always a very nice man. Yeah, he's great to work with. Now, Gray, you worked on a series uh, that I want to talk about, uh, because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, the big news is they're talking about they're slowing down the Star Wars. They're not going to make them as many or as often as they were. And, uh, and there is a Star Wars project that you worked on called Star Wars Detours. Oh. Yeah, and it, it's it's there. It's just sitting there, waiting to be. Waiting around. to be. How many years ago did you make that? Um, about seven years. Because yeah, I worked on that. I was part of that. You were? Yeah. Oh I, George Lucas, worked on it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, yes, you were heavily involved. You had to camp out for all the writers. A lot of them went to camp with yeah. you. And yeah, and 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 it's kind of a funny show. It was fun, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I thought it was fun. But it's not being released, and so. You know, why don't we take this moment to, I, I really want to encourage everybody who has a, a phone and social media, let's talk about how the buzz at Comic-Con 2018 is that, here, I'll just say it, and then you can honestly say, I heard somebody say that Disney Lucasfilm is going to re release Star Wars Detours this Christmas. Everybody starts tweeting it, and then people start retweeting. Everyone here retweets everyone else's tweets. That's like that thing with the, the guy who comes into the kingdom and asks for a chessboard where it's one grain of sand on the first piece and then doubled it all the way, and then he, do we know the story that he takes away all the grain in the kingdom? That's what we have Twitter-wise, and then they'll release it, and we'll know that it was just what we did in this room tonight that made it happen. I thought my life was going to change when I got that thing. I'm like, I got a George Lucas project, oh my god. He was like, you know, yeah, very involved. Your life is going to change. We're going to make it happen. Yes. <laughs> Nothing happened for seven years. So. Uh, great. Do you remember any of the characters you played or the scenes you had to act for that show? Yes. Well, I played a waitress that kind of sounded like she was just kind of like a, a dizzy blonde. Oh, a dizzy dress with Dino. Yes, we all know dogs. <laughs> I think I, I played a, a, a computer voice that sounded a lot like this, and, and kind of like Siri. And um, I think I played an old maid robot, like a maid robot. Which, anyway, I, I think she was German or something. She had a little bit of an accent, you know. So I don't know. Was, yeah. oh. but, but see? This yeah. is old. It needs to <laughs> Germans are always the bad guys in my movies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate the Nazis. Uh, uh, not current day Germans, but World War II era Germans. Indiana Jones is always fighting them. The Goonies are Italians, right? The bad guys are Italians. Yeah, but I didn't make Goonies. That's my buddy Steve. He didn't direct me. Both axes, though. Both axes, pop. Yeah, both axes, pop. Definitely. Although, 
Who needs to was well after Mussolini's reign? Yeah. Uh, now, now, whenever you're uh, whenever you're working on music, do you ever borrow? Like, if I start to do a, a Star Wars theme, could it, could you could we write a song together now? Would that work? You think that you and I could write a song together? Like, if I if I started going like probably yeah, but I'm gonna I don't do the music for the Star Wars movies, so you'll forgive me. If I if I set down like a uh, oh you brought a little keyboard. Was that just there or did you bring it? Oh, we got the beats. <laughs> Hold that up to the mic. Hold that up uh, right up to the mic. <laughs> let's, I want you to play that some more and let's I want people to work out. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be playing with like a melody or something, right?
something interesting and in space theme for chance to do for a D&D adventure. Uh -huh. And I was wondering if that, uh, why, why not make this the, the bridge uh, for George Lucas and, and, you know. Are you saying I should play D&D with George Lucas? I think that's <laughs> good. I think that that's great. Well, why not have this be the new Star Wars? Wait, so. <laughs> if I'm hearing you correctly, you want to make the adventures of the new Star Wars. I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> I mean, with, with all due respect, it sounds more like we'd be doing something in the Willowverse. Sure. Right? Yeah, we should be dealing with Upgood there, you know? Willow Upgood? <laughs> if it's D&D, &D, right? You know, Willow, I know we all seen Willow. Yeah. Willow? Yeah. 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 It's great. You should watch Willow. I named my cat Willow, not after that Willow, but it's connected. <laughs> I named her after Willow Rosenberg from Buck. All Willows are good Willows. Yeah. Weeping. <laughs> Pussy. Man. That's a kind of, and it's not vulgar. I know some people just laugh at that, but that's just a kind of Willow. It's a cat. It's a cat. Pussy Willow. Hello. I'm not a knight. <laughs> not yet. Thank you. Can you just please give Padme a lightsaber? Sure, yeah. She has, she has one. We just never showed it. Yeah. The hell? Yeah, really, uh, she doesn't use it that often. It's just it's like she's got it there, but you know, it just wasn't part of the story. You know, it wasn't it was never a reason for her to fight. So there was a scene where that she was just in her room and she's like, oh yeah, I have that. Yeah. <laughs> And then I was like, do we need this scene? She never fights with it. She just says, I have that, I own that. That was the dialogue. I wrote her, I heard her say, I have that, I own that, this is mine. If she had that, she would have eaten Anakin's ass, like, immediately. Oh, she loved Anakin. She would have, yeah, yeah she, she was very... She knew he was an asshole. Yeah, you know, I mean, that relationship was so troubled. <laughs> like, wearing the outfit that she wore after, like, he uh, murdered a bunch of sand people, so, you know. I'm gonna give you radial land murders on laser discs. <laughs> yes. Mr. George, what do you think of Disney's bastardization of your baby, Howard the Duck? Well, no, Howard the Duck's not my baby. That's a Marvel property that I brought to life when I invented the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> Everybody said, oh, it's a big bomb. I said, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> it's planting a seed now that's going to create the biggest, most successful movies of all time, and you don't even know it, and you won't even remember me when it happens. <laughs> and I won't get the credit, that's fine, but I know what I'm doing. I'm making the flop of this year, but the mega hits of tomorrow. <laughs> what? Is that on Blu-ray yet? On what? On Blu-ray? Blu <laughs> I couldn't hear you, sorry. Is Howard the Duck on Blu-ray? Yes! Yes! <laughs> How dare you ask that question? You should know. This isn't Google, sir. This is Comic Con. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a Captain EO button. <laughs> Captain EO, everyone knows Captain EO? That's who got my picture. <laughs> yes, hello. Hey, I'm a little short for the mic. That's uh, okay. Question for the panel. If you're going to play a character in the Disney fan fiction movies, uh, what character would you want to play? Chewbacca. Chewbacca. <laughs> I, see, I want to say Poe Dameron, but really I would just want to hang out with Poe Dameron. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say Poe Dameron's best friend. <laughs> and I think that's Ben, but I think I would just create a new character that was just like, Poe, oh, that's crazy, let's go on another adventure. <laughs> I play Princess Leia. Adventures and Shakti and Padme and all kinds of things. But I, I would be I would want to be Han Solo because I want to be a badass. Yeah. yeah, I know. Red leader is red leader as you want. Sure, yeah, they're all. Yeah, and and I want to make it make it clear. I was I was very upset when they when Disney tricked me out of the movies. I've, I've actually made my peace with it because once The Last Jedi came out and people started getting furious at the movies. That's when I realized, you know, if people are angry at Star Wars, that means you're doing Star Wars right. 
and so I, I, don't, I no longer consider them fan fiction, and I actually think uh, they're going to start merging the worlds, and I think that's fine. I think Disney and Marvel and the Muppets and Star Wars, it's just a matter of time. So I'm going to think a little bit ahead, and the character that I would play in a Star Wars movie would be Bing Dong, who is a, the stupid cousin of Bing Bong from uh, Inside Out. Uh, Bing Dong is, uh, well, it should come as no surprise, it might be a little offensive. I don't want to say anything about the character's details, but uh, it'll be the kind of character that some people think is hilarious and some people think shouldn't exist. Hey, uh, George, can I quickly tell you an anecdote that is 100% true? Yes, but first, I'm going to give you a broken Empire Strikes Back watch. <laughs> it's fixable. When I was getting ready for this very panel, someone came up to me and went, Oh my god, are you Big Bong? <laughs> and I said, uh, No, I'm Watto. And they went, Oh, okay. <laughs> Whenever anyone, and this is advice for life, whenever anyone asks you, are you Bing Bong? The answer is always yes. <laughs> you'll, you'll, just, you'll just hurt people. Yes? Can I ask the audience a question before this gentleman asks it? Yes. Does anybody remember the Yip Yip Monster? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. I guess being in this environment just made them pop into my head. <laughs> uh, this is directed towards Wado. Hells yeah. <laughs> I, I would just, uh, it's kind of more of a compliment because I like, I'd like to mention, I like your change in style uh, from the last time we started attacking the cover team band in the newsboy cap. Little hat, I have a little hat. <laughs> I didn't bring it tonight, yes. Oh. Okay. It went a couple more days without shaving. I just want to know what made you make these choices. What made you <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, how much time do we have? 45 minutes? <laughs> this is, look, Wado takes his craft very seriously, right? <laughs> And the notion was an attack of the clones, George sent me the script, and originally Wada was the second lead. It's a sort of parallel storyline, Anakin coming in touch with his darkness, and Wato cannot get over the fact that he lost his slave child. I'm calling it as I see it, okay? Yeah. And so he said, really show the wear and tear of this on you emotionally. And I said, what shows rock bottom better than a little scruff and a little hat? <laughs> and then Bradley Cooper stole that first article. And, and here's the thing, and I, I have to apologize to Wado for that, because at the time that I wrote Attack of the Clones, I did not know uh, how to write that story. The story of Wado losing his slave child. Yes. Uh, and for, for any of you who saw the 60 Minutes, uh, not the 60 Minutes, yeah, the 60 Minutes interview with Charlie Rose interviewing me, I compared the loss of uh, Star Wars franchise to Disney to uh, the feeling you get when you uh, sell your children to the white slavers. Uh, Once again, I would like to recommend that everyone leaving here Google to find out that, yes, in fact, George Lucas said uh, And, you know, what's great about that clip is that uh, I actually don't come off as the worst person in that clip anymore. <laughs> I'm playing a long game, all right? Don't be guessing. You think you've outsmarted me? I'm 10 years ahead of you, I promise. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you, uh, and this is actually kind of a special gift. This was donated. This is, this is in like protective wrapping. This is a uh, ticket to the premiere of Phantom Menace. It's no longer good, it happened. <laughs> Because you singled out one, though, I have a prize for you as well. It's five potato wedges in a pack no, of the funny <laughs> Yes, I uh, have a question for George. Yeah. Uh, first, thank you for being here. What's um, that? I have a, a question about what's kind of going on. It came out this week in Star Wars that uh, John Favreau of Elfman is, <laughs> is getting his live action Mandalorian show. Um, what do you think about that, and when is your apprentice Dave Loney and get a little more credit in Star Wars? Universe? Can I just pause for clarification? You're speaking of John Favreau, director of Elf, the fourth best movie of 2003. Show <laughs> some fucking respect. <laughs> what was the second part of your question? When, uh, when, when is your apprentice Dave Loney going to get promoted a little bit in the now uh, Disney era Lucas? Regime? Well, I don't, I don't make the admin decisions anymore. I, I don't do the hiring or the firing or the promoting. But I will say, that, first of all, it's John Favreau, uh, the, the filmmaker who made Swingers, not the Obama-era speechwriter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm confusion. And I'm 
I mean, either of them, I, I think either would be fine. I would actually encourage uh, Disney to also give a Star Wars movie to John Favreau, the Obama-era speechwriter. I think that would be inspirational. I think the country could use that right now. Like, wouldn't you go see a Star Wars movie written by an Obama-era speechwriter? Um, uh, I think John Favreau, uh, uh, the writer-director of Swingers, is so money and he doesn't even know it. That's a Swingers reference. Illustrated cards that came with the last, uh, the Force Awakens uh, CD soundtrack that I'm gonna put me in scenes. Did they put the CDs out? You got those out of the dumpster? No, these were from a CD I uh, If I buy a CD, I don't need two art prints to come with it. I don't know what to do with that. I genuinely, I wanna say this. If you're putting, it's enough that I'm buying on CD, I don't need two art prints. Kind of the CD thing. I'm at a loss. Did they make you buy the fourth? Did they just give you? Yeah, I don't get anything free. I don't own these things. I pay a ticket like everybody else. I'm a billionaire. I don't care. Yes. <laughs> Sonia. Sonia. Um, Sonia. Can you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street? <laughs> Practice. <laughs> Sponsorship deal with you. This is part of. We're never going to forgive you for this. 
George Lucas, I said, look, story comes first. And no one's gonna watch a five hour movie where three of the hours are him uh, checking that too, all right? And honestly, I wish Disney would release that cut. I don't have the power to do that anymore. I'm gonna tweet at Disney and Mountain Dew and say, please release the full Mountain Dew cut of the Phantom Menace. Yoda's nature. I would love to know your take on that. Look, we saw what happened, all right? And, and, <laughs> the, the fan community loves to say what wouldn't happen in movies that they just saw happen. <laughs> you know? Like, this is, and this is something that the fan community, I would suggest, you could work on, which is if you watch a movie, you can like it or not, but you shouldn't say things like, that would never happen, because it fucking did. <laughs> all right? So I'm not... I don't like it, but don't say that Luke wouldn't go live on the island. It's the best place a Jedi has ever run to. The other options were a desert and a swamp, all right? <laughs> Luke was the smart one. He's like, I'll live on an island with a community and people that I can interact with. Like, this was a good outcome. And I'm sorry if everyone's had disappointments in their life, but get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I've had come in through some rough stuff too. Right? <laughs> right? I was coupled in, all right? Yeah. Oh, uh, too, too hard? Too hard? It's real. Read a biography. Yes. This is a question for everyone on the panel. Um, what is your favorite letter of the alphabet, and who would win in a fight to the death between the letters of the alphabet for whatever reason? Oh, this is, this is going to take the last 30 seconds we have. Uh, okay, so. What is our favorite letter of the alphabet? W. <laughs> w for Lotto. I'm going to say M for movie. I'm going to say T for Travis. <laughs> I'm going to defer to Maria. I'm going to say C for Tom Kine. <laughs> yeah. C is a good one. I'm going to change my answer to C, and it also applies to C Red Tails, C Strange Magic, <laughs> C Star Wars Detours coming this Christmas. Oh my gosh. Every episode is dropping on Christmas. Morning. It's a Star Wars Christmas after all. Tweet about this that the Christmas plan is for them to release Star Wars Star Wars. Oh, hold on. You need a, a prize, right? And C for cookie. Let's not forget. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I have the B word. A, K would win in a fight against all the other letters. But because K looks like it's like ready to kick the entry and punch. I just think K is a very violent letter. <laughs> I think are we at are we at time? I need uh, I need someone to tell me if we. Uh, what? 8.45. And is that the time this ends? <laughs> I need, who's, the, who's in charge of Comic Con? <laughs> who's the boss? If someone's the boss. <laughs> it's fine, Well, this person sounds like they're in charge. And says, All right, more questions. <laughs> more questions. Uh, uh, I have a question for Watto. Elsie. Uh, if you had a blank check to make any crazy <laughs> project that you would like to make, what would that be? Angley's Hope. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank my guests on the panel. I want to thank everybody for coming. Please keep those singing and we'll play the final music.